皆さんこんにちは久しぶりでしょう、えー、と今日のトピックは日本語の勉強です今日は私はどうやって、あのー、どの方法で日本語を勉強したかについて話したいと思いますが、えっと、英語で説明しますのでぜひあの日本語を勉強すればぜひ最後まで見てください Right, so let's switch to English because it's easier and for a wider audience. Also, it takes very long to subtitle. Today, I'm going to talk about five ways I learned Japanese. A lot of people ask me, How do you learn Japanese? And it's not as simple as just saying, Well, I've studied for a few years, so that's why.、Um, there are different ways that you can study, and also ways that are more effective than other ways. Number one, before I started, I made sure to listen to the language as much as possible. This will make your ear used to what the natural language sounds like, helps you pronounce things easier,、um, and really improves your listening comprehension. Remember to do it actively though. Don't just listen and not take anything in. Take notes what kind of words are you hearing, listen to the inflection and the tone of, of、um, sentences. And actively try and copy what you are hearing. Now, obviously, you can't do this if you don't know how to speak the language, but what I'm trying to get at is that your ear has to get used to the language before you dive in, and that you can do through listening to Japanese music, watching Japanese movies with English or whatever your native language is subtitles,、um, listening to Japanese radio. All of this will just tune your ear into the sound of the language. Number two, invest in a good textbook. There are so many Japanese textbooks on the market that are great. Personally, I used、um, Japanese for busy people when I just started. It's excellent for beginners,、um, and they have different levels as well, and they introduce kanji at a very natural pace, so it can go up from beginner to advanced. I highly recommend Japanese for busy people. A lot of other people like Mina no Nihongo. My parents used Mina no Nihongo when they studied in Japan. Personally, I found it a bit boring and archaic, but、uh, not the language archaic, but like the layout of the textbook. Even though it is possible to learn Japanese without buying a textbook, it's always good to have a book to follow,、um, but it is possible to get PDFs online.、Um, there's a bunch of different websites like、um, Maggie Sensei or like JGram where you can look up grammar and kanji. But、um, a textbook, personally, I like to use physical books to write in and、uh, copy the words and get my hand used to. Um, writing kanji. So, three special mentions that I haven't talked about yet are these three books, which I really enjoy. First one is、um, Sugu ni Tsukairu Nihongo Kaiwa. They have different levels. These are、uh, chou mini phrases, it's like mini phrases, which really help you sound natural in Japanese. A lot of textbooks will not teach you these kinds of phrases. It comes with a CD, so what I did when I lived in South Africa and had a car, I would listen to this on the way to work every day. And I cannot emphasize how much it helped me to constantly hear these phrases. So, even now, when I go through this book and read the phrases that they're showing, I can hear the voices of the people who recorded the CD in my head because it's been so ingrained in my memory. Sometimes I will forget the meaning of one of these phrases, but I'll know that I heard it before. So, I need to remember to keep on practicing these phrases. It doesn't just help if I read it and hear it, I need to use it myself as well. The next special mention is Shin Nihongo. The next special mention is this series, Shin Nihongo. I'll put the link in the description.、Um, they make books for every level of the JLPT. So, currently I'm studying towards N2, which I'd like to do next year. I have spoken about this book in a lot of my other Japanese videos, so I won't go into that now, but please check out my Japanese playlist. Um, but that's one that I really love. And then, of course,、um, there's another prep book. You can recognize them from there's like a monkey or an owl or some kind of animals on the books, and they all look the same.、Um, Nihongo Somatome is the name of the series.、Um, you get them for kanji and、um, any other section that you will get on the JLPT. So it's like JLPT test prep. And、um, I like that they have practice tests in it and also showing you how to write the kanji or like what the kanjis are. So I've gone through listening and investing in a good textbook. Number three is immersion. You will never learn a language if it's not constantly around you. I mean, yes, you will, but it's going to be very slow. So if you want to speed up your process in learning a language, do everything you do in whatever language you generally operate in, but change it to Japanese. If you are making a shopping list, rather write your shopping list in Japanese. If you're writing a diary, write your diary in Japanese. If you're listening to music, why not listen to Japanese music? If you're listening to a podcast, change it to a Japanese podcast. 
Obviously, it is going to be difficult in the start when you're just a beginner, but the more you push yourself and the more you look up these words you don't know, the more you hear language, the faster you are going to improve. Also, I need to remember not to be shy to speak the language. So point number four is putting myself out there and trying to use the language as much as I can. I did my internships in Japan. I worked in three different um, design companies and it is so embarrassing to look back at the emails I sent in my first year of um, working in Japan. Uh, it was so bad. My Japanese was a horrible level. Um, I didn't know about keigo, which is like formal honorific business language. And I must have come across as so rude to these people when I was applying for internships. Like no wonder I only like got into a few companies. Um, but the point is I, I used what I knew a little bit of Japanese I knew I put myself out there yes it was difficult but that was such a great opportunity for me to be surrounded in a Japanese working environment and then to learn on the spot what is keigo formal Japanese how to use it in context then by my third year um, of uh, applying for internships so this was during the time I was a student I would go back in the holiday so the like three years after that when I did an internship at a big um, advertising agency in Japan I was very comfortable using Keigo. I could apply professionally. I had a Japanese format CV, which is different from a Western format CV. And if I hadn't put myself out of my comfort zone in my first year, I wouldn't have been able to get to that level by my third year if I hadn't made all of those mistakes in the beginning. So really mistakes are part of how we learn. And the more you put off speaking the language, the less natural you're going to sound. Um, it's okay to embarrass yourself, it's okay to make mistakes because at least you are trying. If you never make a mistake, you'll never know where to improve. A lot of you might say, well, I don't know where to find native speakers, I don't live in Japan, I can't travel to Japan. You can download apps to um, talk to native speakers. There are pen pal websites, there are Facebook groups to meet people. Really so many different ways that you can learn just using the internet. There are language exchanges like Mundolingo, so you can do a search on a website like meetup.com and see if there are any Japanese groups in the city where you live. So there's really where there's a will, there is a way you will meet someone online or in person. And tip number five is actual hard work and studying. It sounds like a silly tip, but I think there are still people who think um, language learning just happens overnight. You'll look at a YouTube polyglot and you'll be like, wow, you know, they speak so well, I'll never get to that level, I'm just not going to try. Or conversely, there are people who are like, oh, wow, well, yeah, I'll just put in a little bit of effort and I hope the results come. Guys, what you don't see behind the scenes is like really late nights of studying, thousands of flashcards, writing the same kanji over and over and over, um, sitting in a cafe until closing time because I'm stressing to prepare for my JLPT exam. There is a lot of work that goes into language learning. Um, don't look at polyglots and think they have just a natural knack. What they do have is um, they know how to study. You teach yourself how to learn. And this only comes from years of practicing. It's okay if you're still figuring out what methods work for you, but the most important thing is to put in the work. Don't uh, do something half-heartedly and expect the results to come. Um, this can be in any way. You can sit and study from a textbook. You can be listening to podcasts and actively writing down the vocab words, looking them up. You can um, get a Japanese teacher and do your homework on time and go to exchanges. As long as you're doing something in the language actively, um, you will learn very quickly. So remember to put in the hard work. Now, it is uh, too much to mention in this video, so I'd like to give a shout out to my own um, resources page. I love collecting resources for you guys, so do check out the Japanese resource page I have on my website. There's a long list of resources, apps, um, textbooks, everything on there, so please uh, look at that if you want to check out more different ways that you can study Japanese. That is all for today, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.